Position first. Uh, I don't know. There were not really any quote artist where I grew up, but there were lots of people who made things and did things and and uh, who, and who were creative. And so, ever since I can remember, I've known that that is what I would do. I would make things. You know, once the once the uh, writing is done, and once I start working with the images and stuff, I, I'm really trying to, uh, you know, trying to respond to the text. I would draw because that was the most accessible form of doing artwork, and also it was something that I could do quietly, you know, anywhere, almost any time. Later in high school, I started painting more taking uh, art classes and then realizing that I could use this as a skill to become an illustrator. And so I concentrated on doing illustration. Generally, I'm inspired by a family relationship. One of the things that uh, inspires me about my mother uh, that I like to put into the work is her, her strength, her honesty, her, um, her openness, her generosity. She's a very, very quiet, gentle person, but a person who's infinitely reliable. And so there's a physicality that I try to portray in, uh, in the women in my work that denotes a strength a strength of body, because that is the first noticeable sign of, of that strength, is that physical strength. And with very, very little expression, I rarely show people smiling, you know, because smiles can be deceptive. Just because a person is smiling does not mean that they are happy. And just because a person is frowning or, or, has, or, or is not smiling does not mean they are not happy. Uh, so I try to just get that out of the way, you know, so that people will look deeper, search for the expression. Preparing backgrounds with, uh, with this lighter color that I want to show through, I have to do, this, do the lighter color first because I, if I want it to show through over the darker colors once I put them on, but I also want it to have a little bit of texture, you know, and, and, some, and, some, uh, and some randomness about it. I want, I'm trying to create texture. I don't know exactly. Uh, what I'm going to put on this background yet, but I'm thinking this one will be one that has trees in, in it. There will be trees here. Okay, these, these would be mainly blue. Then I printed these uh, patterns on them, uh, on the backgrounds there. Okay. And this is uh, one of the blue ones that's, that's just plain, the plain blue without any pattern on it yet. And so I will, I will put a pattern on, on all of them, on the backgrounds for all of the, uh, all of the pieces I do. And this is, this is all, and this is one that I've uh, mixed in some of the other color with. 
So I, this is how, that, how I like for that yellow to show through that I put down on the, on the background. So when I put other darker colors on it, it shows, it will show through, through here. In my work, I try to illuminate those small connections that are, you know, that, that are throughout the diaspora. Brooms I use for, for, you know, for several reasons. Before emancipation, black people would jump over the broom to signify that they were married. And that's why I started using them at first. And then I would use them to signify cleaning because they were used on the big cleaning day for, for one of the Orishas, for Oshala. I guess more of a pure symbol is an okra. It's a symbol of something that we have managed to keep and that we brought from Africa. And I feel like that its power has grown instead of being depleted. I use uh, jars uh, with water, hammers, axes. If I see things like that, I take them before I know exactly how I'm gonna use them. Sometimes a person will ask why I make all of my people so dark and black. They don't understand why I have to do that. Why can't I make them look more realistic or the, the color that they are? And I tell them, for me, it is a metaphor. It is to be read as, as black, you know, and, and accepted as, as black. I am not interested in, in hiding the, the blackness in my work. If a white person doesn't understand it, doesn't get it, it's, it's really not that important, you know? They can go and learn, and I would hope that they would look into why they don't understand it. Uh, if a black person doesn't understand it, um, that's important to me, because then I want to make sure that they do understand it, <laughs> you know, that they do. And it's important also because I want to know what their perspective is. That's who the work is for. It's not for teaching white people about cotton and slavery. The biggest thing about it in being an artist is that I don't view, uh, I don't understand the art industry, the art world. And I don't know if I want to. I don't think that art functions for me in the same way that it functions for the art industry. It's important to me that the art serves my community. I don't believe in art for art's sake. Art, just for the artist, for my, just for my personal expression, is selfish. To me, I feel like it needs to uh, have a function because I feel like unless it functions, it ain't art. It's a, it's a cultural tool that we use. You know, that's what art is, it's a cultural tool.